Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, let's start out with this very important Rick Santelli rant here on the floor of the stock exchange. And uh, you're going to see why this is important because it perfectly describes exactly what has been happening and actually what happened today. We're going to see this when we look at the chart of Deutsche Bank. But uh, let's listen to Rick first here. Today, there's an all clear. You know, there are many lessons to be learned from Deutsche Bank. And, and I'm not really talking about the ones that you, the viewer or listener on the radio, may be thinking of. My lesson is central banks. Now, I'm not here to say that they've had bad intent. I think all central bankers truly want to help. But please, don't help anymore, okay? Let's think about this. So, they're bailing out the system after the credit crisis. And what we've had since are years and years of digging more help, finding more help, looking for more free help, easy money. How's it really helped anything? I'll use the same analogy I've used for years. You can't wallpaper over termites forever, okay? Deutsche Bank has plenty of issues we don't need to get into. But one issue that's going to affect not only Deutsche Bank and the European banks, it's going to affect the Japanese banks, the emerging market banks, and our banks, is the fact that the more negative interest rates prevail, the worse profitability is going to be. But it can get worse. And I'll tell you why. Do you think the Swiss National Bank or the Bank of Japan, or even with regard to corporates, the ECB, the other two were stocks, central banks buying into markets you really think that's a good idea let's use deutsche bank as an example let's say the stock of deutsche bank keeps going down the cocoa bonds keep converting into equity everybody keeps blowing it out what if the central banks all get together and decide well okay we don't want that to happen let's buy deutsche bank or when any other bank or company is in trouble we'll buy that or as you get the political Highlight points like election times. You want to keep everything pretty clean. Make sure nothing goes down. Is that the world we really want to live in? Here's where I'm going with this. Janet Yellen recently, and it's all over every blog and every tongue of every trader, is considering the costs and benefits of doing things like other central banks. Maybe buying equities. Maybe buying corporates. It's a bad idea. It's not only the fact of who gets to pick and choose, it will completely and utterly, in every possible way, destroy any value in the marketplace. Completely. It'll be a useless investment. What good is it without price discovery, without people getting together and using the markets to either add to risk or dispense of their risk to actually get a large group of individuals, whether in a group or on an electronic platform, to bid an offer and come up with a true price reflecting the fundamentals of whatever they're trading. A backstop by central banks is not only horrible, and the final joke here is, is that in order for Janet Yellen and company to do any of that, they would go and have to get permission from Congress. I will just leave it at that. Think about that congressional hearing. Back to you. So, very good rant from Rick Santelli. Now, this is exactly what's happening. I'm going to show you on the Deutsche Bank chart, uh, but I wanted to read you this quote of the day that I have up on the uh, Silver for the People public blog. And this is the quote, anyone who claims to stand for free markets, free trade, and limited government, but who attempts to defend the existence or importance of the Federal Reserve or central banking is a liar. Either you support free markets and freedom of pricing, or you support central bank price fixing and creeping socialism. There is no third way or middle road. Socialism and the free market are mutually incompatible. A little bit of socialism in the form of price fixing is like a little bit of gangrene. If left unchecked, it will eventually infect and kill the whole. And that's Paul Martin Foss, uh, von Mises Institute. Now let's look at the Deutsche Bank chart here. This is the one minute. Um, I personally believe that we had central bank intervention going on there, but I also believe that it, this was due to the DOJ reducing the fine from, I think it was from 14 or 15 billion down to 5 billion, as if that makes any difference to a bank that has a 50 to 60 trillion dollar derivative book. 
Uh, it doesn't, in the long run, it doesn't make any difference, but it does have the effect of getting traders piling on trying to make a quick profit, and of course, that's what the central bank's trying to do. So you can see as we started out in the morning with a lot of things blowing out, the news being really bad, you can see a full 10% decline, gap down open with Deutsche Bank, but clearly someone had set a floor at that 10 price. You can see when it hit, got near that 10 price on that big sell, you can see that we had massive buying coming right in there with those blue candlesticks that came in. It attempted to sell off again, again, massive buying. And then finally a third time they tried to sell it off, they gapped it up this time. They actually gapped the price. And then uh, it, it had a little bit of sell off and that's when the rally began. Now, I think that the news was probably leaked, and that is what started this rally that we get here. We kind of stabilized. There's this uh, gap to fill. We started to fill the gap. I think the rumor of the DOJ changing their position was probably leaked to the traders in this area so they could all get on board, and then the news was announced um, that the DOJ was reducing the fine against Deutsche Bank. So. Here we have all the governments of the world working together to keep this teetering mess from collapsing, and it really is a teetering mess. Now, I did a lot of cross comparisons of various charts to uh, see if there was any kind of reaction, opposite reaction based on this uh, spike in the price of Deutsche Bank, and actually, one of the best reverse indicators, believe it or not, much better than gold, which didn't really react, was silver, the silver spot price. And you can see that silver had a big move. Uh, what happened was Deutsche Bank crashed out of the gate. Uh, silver started to rally based on that and uh, was kind of going sideways with Deutsche Bank and then uh, took off with a big speculative rally and then this is right as the secret news is being leaked that the U.S. and probably along with the Justice Department dropping the fine was probably the Federal Reserve and the Central Bank of Europe in there buying shares on both the New York and the uh, European exchanges. And then what do we get? A massive smackdown in silver and a massive rally in Deutsche Bank stock. So that's pretty good confirmation. These systems are tied to each other. The same people who are manipulating and keeping the banks alive and creating gigantic paper Ponzi schemes are the same people who are suppressing the price of the precious metals. So I wanted to do a review here of the Lunar Series, uh, this rooster. And what I wanted to do is go across the four main ones that I follow which is uh, Atmex, Gainesville, Provident, and JM Bullion, and cover the buys there. So the best price, roughly, give or take a few cents, uh, for the half ounce is going to be around $14. That seems a little steep, but if we're looking at a $20 silver price, then that's about $8 above spot. Now that's not really good compared to what we've had. But what I'm noticing with the half ounce is that it's starting to creep up to the same premiums as the one ounce. We're going to see a pretty good deal on the one ounce here in a second. But so the best deal that I can see here is 1381. That's 500 or more. And uh, you can see that they have 2000. So to get that 1381 price, you have to pay with check or wire and you also have to buy 500 or more. Not the greatest deal. Next up we have Gainesville Coins. Gainesville Coins actually has the one ounce and it's for $27. Uh, the, but the check price here you can see uh, is actually down at $26.23. Now that is the best price I have seen on a Lunar Series 2 one ounce out of the gate. Uh, for many many years so for me that is a, a screaming buy for a one ounce lunar series coin 
Uh, unfortunately, when we look at it, you can see that uh, there's only six. Six has been added to your cor uh, cart, max quantity six. Uh, now, are they rationing these? Six seems like a really strange number. Maybe they just almost have run out, or maybe they're rationing them. Please note that uh, this coin is not available to be shipped until the 7th of October. So I'm assuming that Gainesville is going to come in here and order more from the Perth Mint. Uh, I'm going to be watching it very carefully to see if we stabilize and, you know, if the silver price stabilizes, if we keep this 2623 price. Now you have to buy over 101, but they don't have them for available. So it's not possible right now. Uh, and you know, at rationing them out six at a time, you have to pay 27, 27. Even so, that is a very low price for a one ounce Lunar Series 2. So I'm gonna keep a very careful eye on that. I will let you know uh, when I see deals come on that. For me, that's a screaming buy right now. Now next up we have Provident Metals, and uh, this is, they had also had the half ounce uh, rooster, but I noticed that they had a bunch of these half ounce goats. Now, again, I pointed out that you can't go by the sell price at these places for what the value of them is. You have to look on eBay and it's very difficult to determine. But with the, with Atmex asking $34 for a half ounce uh, goat, uh, uh, 1462 seems to be a pretty good price. Uh, now, what do they have? They have uh, 176 of those. Uh, yeah, that's about, you know, almost, that's 10 bucks above spot per ounce. So that's, that's pretty expensive. But again, that coin is, has already, in my opinion, started to appreciate. So that might be one that you want to consider. The last one is JM Bullion, and they have the two ounce rooster, and that's as cheap as under $50. You can see if you buy a wire check or Bitcoin and you buy 20 plus, you can get them for under 50 bucks. And they have, Well, it looks like it uh, took my order, so they must have more than uh, 999. Let's add another nine here. Uh, they have a thousand, so that's that's a good deal. They have a thousand of those two ounce roosters at basically 50 bucks. So this would be my number two, but I'm probably gonna hold out for this one ounce to see if they get more in at $26 because that is that is really a screaming buy. Now, per ounce prices, that still comes to uh, more expensive than, than the two ounce. But again, that's the cheapest I've ever seen uh, a one ounce coin, probably in the la at least the last five years of the one ounce Lunar Series. So, Back to the chart here, I was expecting to see a lot of reactions with this Deutsche Bank bailout. Now, you, this is kind of a backdoor bailout. You, you can't know for sure because, you know, when we had Lehman, when we had Bear Stearns, there were big, big rally uh, areas, uh, times where there were tremendous drops and then the stock price would come in and get a large amount of support and then it would subsequently collapse after that. That's sort of like what we had um, back in here. We had some rallies and then we failed. So this is a, a fairly strong rally and especially based on the volume. So you can see when we're on the daily chart, that does take out the last one that we had as far as the highest volume. It takes out this one here as well. So we're looking at the highest volume this very well could turn into a bottom spike, something like we saw in Bank of America when they rescued Bank of America. It's my opinion that they do not intend to let the any part of the system collapse before the election because uh, that would probably swing things to Donald Trump. Uh, that whatever happens under the current administration's watch, 
is is probably going to be blamed on the current administration. So any really bad events between now and election time would probably swing the voters towards Trump. And we know that the powers that be, I'm not going to say that, uh, that Trump isn't one of them, because uh, after watching that debate, I had sneaking suspicions that Trump was just playing along, being part of a show. Uh, sometimes I wonder whether he was working for the Clintons. He did, in my opinion, so bad in that debate. Not that he didn't win the debate, but it seems like he did so bad in the debate. And uh, just today, I believe we had the United Nations coming out and tweeting on how to defeat Trump. So Trump has basically taken on all comers. It's kind of like a wrestling match in more ways than one. He's taken on all comers and uh, he's beaten them. He's taken on his own party. He's taken on the media. He's taken on the opposite party. He's taken on uh, leaders of foreign governments, now the United Nations, the Pope. Uh, it seems that everybody is against Donald Trump, uh, except for the American people. If it turns out that Donald Trump wins and the American people uh, put him in power, I expect to see really big fireworks. Because one of the reasons why they hold these things to election time is because they, when, when everything falls apart right after some event, like a surprise election result or something like that, well, who's to blame? Well, the people. They can blame the people. So we see that. I pointed out the election cycle before. The stock market follows an election cycle. A lot of these things fall in an election cycle. But I think this intervention in Deutsche Bank today is an indication that they intend to keep things propped up at least until the election. But things are on really, really shaky ground. And we'll talk to you next time.